Welcome back everyone, this is Dr. Gonstein, and here we are again for an R Studio demo for lecture number 14. So in lecture 14, we went over a difference and difference model, and today I'm just gonna show you how to, um, to run a difference and difference model in R. This is gonna be a very short lecture. It's actually quite straightforward. In fact, um, from everything that we've seen so far in the lecture and in past R demos, I actually think you'd be able to do this uh, without a demo, but I'll just show you, uh, I'll just provide one anyways. So uh, install our libraries and import our data. We're using the wage underscore DID data set. So when we use difference and difference, uh, we need to have a very specific type of data. So difference and difference data is it's panel data, typically a two-year panel data. And what it does is it has data for before an intervention goes into place and after that intervention has gone into place. And it has data for those who get the intervention and for people that do not get the intervention. Okay, so it's a two year panel data set where it is before and after. And it is data set that has a treatment group and a control group. Okay, so in this, what we're going to do, um, we've seen this before, we're just going to try to measure the impact of a training on wages. Okay, so straightforward, um, but the training was not randomly assigned. Some people got the training, some people didn't. We can see that in the data set. Here's the training variable. Some people didn't get the training and some people did. So we have a clear treatment group and a control group, but the treatment wasn't randomly assigned. So we don't have any reason to think that, um, that it would be statistically independent. Okay, but we do have data on all of those people, the people who got the treatment, or the people that got the training, the people that didn't, we have data on all of them, both before the training happened and after the training happened. So we can take advantage of that to use the DID model to try to estimate that causal effect of the training. Okay, so all we need here is we need our year variable. So there's the variable that measures the change across time. We need our training variable. That's the variable that measures the... Um, that identifies people as a person who gets the training or not. So you can see here, person four must have been a person that got the training because it has one one here. All right. Uh, person 11 must be a person that got the training. Now you'll notice here that the training variable equals one if that person got the training at all. Okay. Now we know that the training didn't go into place until the second year. But the training variable still equals one, even in the first year, because that is a person who was trained, even though they were not trained as of the first year. This is a very important detail. I just want to point this out to you when you're doing DID models. You need to make sure that your, your treatment variable, in this case training, um, it equals one in both time periods, in both time periods for any person that received the training or received the treatment. Okay, so looking at that, all we need to do is we just need to inter um, create an interaction term where we will multiply training times year. So I'll do that here. Just going to generate an interaction term. So I want to create a variable. I'm going to call it train year or train YR. And it's going to be a variable inside the wages data set. And it's going to be equal to training, which is from the wages data set, times year from the wages data set. So I'll just run this, create that variable. Okay. So we have that new variable, this new interaction term. We got it. So now we can run our DID model. I'm going to uh, run the model here. I'm going to call it just MDID. So like model DID, you can, call it, you can call it whatever you want. All right, just linear model. So it's just a standard OLS. Regressing wage onto training, year, and the interaction term. You don't necessarily need any other variables, but we can include them. So we'll include... Um, some time uh, variant variables here, and then we'll use the data set wages. Okay, now just a quick side note. So here when you include variables, you don't want to include variables that might have been affected by the training. I'm just going to say here that it didn't, uh, that these weren't affected by the training, but it's important to note that you don't want to include variables here that could have been affected by the training. Um, if you want to include a variable that you think could could have been affected by the training. You could include a variable, but use only the baseline information for it. Uh, we can talk about that more in class. But anyways, here's my model, very straightforward. Just run the model and I'll report the summary. You'll see I'm gonna report robust standard errors. 
And here we go. Here's our results. Um, we always include the training variable, or you know, which is in this case our, our treatment variable. We always include the year. So the, the, the treatment variable is going to measure the difference between the treatment and control group at baseline. The year variable is going to measure uh, the change over time. And then it's the interaction term that's going to give us our treatment effect. So let me just interpret a couple things here, and then we'll wrap up. So this training variable, this measures the difference between the treatment and the control group in the baseline year, before the training goes into place. Um, this measures the difference between the treatment group and the control group in the baseline year with respect to their wages. So, so here what this tells me, and it's, it is statistically significant at the 10% level, so what this tells me is wages are uh, $1.8 lower for those who would eventually go on to be trained as compared to those who would uh, not be trained, okay? So those who, for those people who would eventually go on to be trained, they start out in the baseline year having uh, $1.8 lower wages, holding the other variables constant. Okay, this year variable, I'll, I'll interpret this. You'll see this is significant. So what this is telling us is that there is a, a, a time trend in the wages. Uh, we can see that it's positive and it's significant. So uh, this is telling us that wages are going up over time. So specifically what this is saying is that wages are $2.64 higher on average in 2017 as compared to 2015. So there's some holding all of the variables constant. So there's some time trend where wages are just generally going up. Okay, and then finally, the one that we really focused on here, uh, it's our interaction term. We can see that it's significant at the 5% level. Um, we haven't talked about DID assumptions. DID assumptions are kind of hard to validate. I'm gonna interpret this as if um, we are assuming that the assumptions hold. So what this is saying is that the training caused a $3.21 increase in wages. Okay, so that's how I'd interpret that coefficient. I'm going to interpret it causally uh, just because uh, I'm going to assume that the assumptions hold. All right, that's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. We'll see you next time.